All right, grade eight. This one um, is on unit five, the functions and relations. It's very similar to what was done in unit four, where you have the the numbers going in when you're substituting and then you're getting the numbers out. So in this case, we're starting with a flow diagram. You might remember this from primary school. The spider diagrams were similar. So you have done these before. But let's just go over it. This flow diagram is a graphical picture means of describing algebraic expressions, meaning we are using rules with letters, X's and Y's. Um, so the input values are the numbers that we are putting in on the left. And then you have a rule or something that's happening in the middle. And then what is the answer that we're getting out on the right? So we call them input, output, and then the rule is in the middle. So we're putting in a negative 3 and we are adding 8 to it. Then we're putting in a 9 and we're adding 8 to it. Putting in a 15 and adding 8 to it. So this isn't the algebra yet. The next one does have the x's um, with the numbers. All right, so negative 3 and we're adding 8 to it. So it's like you owe me 3 rand, but you pay me 8 rand. I have 5 rand extra. Then 9 plus 8 is 17. 15 plus 8 is 23. Alright, so that one's a basic one. But now, for the next one, you need to understand what's happening with that x. These input values are also seen as x values or any letters that are involved. So in this case, it's a letter. Alright, so... When we're going from the input to the output, I'm going to put that 5 in for that x. So I'm going to do just like a little sum here. 2, and then instead of the x, I'm going to put a bracket with the 5. And then I'm going to minus 5. You used to have blocks, empty blocks involved, um, boxes in your spider diagram. So instead of a box, we're using an x. So instead of the x, you're going to put a 5, just like you would have if it was a box like that. Right. So 2 times 5 is 10, and I'm going to take away 5 is 5. Then for the next one, 2 times 0 minus 5. 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 5 is negative 5. Then 2 times 11 minus 5. That's 22 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so if you want to put a box, you can put a box as well. But the x is representing something that's missing. The input is the answer to what's missing. Now for the last one, it's a bit trickier because it's asking you to go backwards from the output. So you've got to go backwards along here. So you've got to think something, question mark, went in, was multiplied by negative 2. So these are representing the m values. So negative 2 was times by something, an input value, and then 4 was added to it. So now, if we need to go backwards, we've got to undo the rule. So we've got to go 8, and instead of adding 4, we've got to take away 4, and then instead of multiplying by negative 2, we've got to divide. So when you go backwards, you do the opposite, or we call it the inverse operation. That's too many pieces. Operation. Inverse operation. Alright, so 8 minus 4 is 4, and then 4 divided by negative 2 is going to, if you have a positive, so you can even do it on the side, positive divided by a negative is going to get me a negative answer. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And you can check. Go back from input to output. Negative 2 times negative 2 would give me positive 4. Plus 4 would give me 8. So let's do this one now. Negative 2. I'm going to take another 4 away from it to make it negative 6. And so then I have negative 6 divided by negative 2, negative over negative gets me a positive, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Check yourself, 3 times negative 2 
is going to give me negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Then negative 6, I'm going to take away another 4 from it, so undo it. And so 6 minus 4, is, sorry, negative 6 minus 4 is negative 10. So then I'm going to have negative 10 divided by negative 2. Negative over negative gives me a positive. 10 over 2 is 5. Go back and check. Negative 2 times positive 5 will get me negative 10. Add on 4 to it, we get negative 6. So you really do need to know your integers here, but you can use your calculator to check your answer as well if you need the help. All right, so you can then work on the exercise 5.1. Again, the memo is on uh, the Google Classroom page, the resources page. Okay, then on the next page, next side of the note, it's the same as what we worked with in Unit 4 using tables to determine output values. We just don't call them input or output. So here's the rule. This is your input and your rule. Okay, so that's all your input values. And then this empty block is going to be your output values. Okay, so what's happening is I'm going to put negative 9 into my rule, and I'm going to get an output value. So if you need some extra paper, have it on the side. You can then say, my rule is 5y minus 3. Y is representing the input number. This whole thing is representing the rule, and we try to find out what the answer will be. So 5 times by negative 9. So instead of using a box now, let's use a bracket. So instead of the Y, you're going to put a bracket with the, the input in. Minus 3. And when you ask, do you have to put the bracket? Yes, you do have to put the bracket. Otherwise, it looks like 5 subtracting 9 instead of 5 times by negative 9. Because when things in maths touch directly, they are multiplying with each other. So 5 times negative 9, so negative times positive is negative, 5 times 9 is going to get me to 45. Right, so then when we're working with, oh, sorry, I should have used a different color. that piece there, when we're working there, that is the multiplication, that's your bod mass, your bracket. And then this is just a subtraction. So we end up with negative 45 minus a 3, subtracting. So we're going to get a negative 48. Right, so negative 48. Right. Then the next one, negative 7 is going in. So we have 5y minus 3 is your rule. Negative 7 is our input. So it's 5 times negative 7 minus another 3. So I'm going to get 5 times a negative is going to give me negative. 5 times 7 is 35. And then this is a subtraction because it's not involved in the bod mass. So we do it afterwards. So that's going to get me negative 35. And I take even more off. It is negative 38. All right, so your output value, instead of being on the other side of the spider diagram or the box, it is now in the table. The next one's nice and easy because the zero helps us a little bit here. So we are working with 5 times 0 minus 3. So 5 times 0 is 0, and then take away 3 is negative 3. Then we have 5 times times 3 in your table minus 3 5 times 3 is 15 minus 3 is going to get me to 12 right you don't have to show the working out you can do it in your head right so we're working with now 5 times 4 let's do this one on our head 5 times 4 is 20 minus 3 is 17 Okay, then for this next one, 
there is my input is the first um, row there is my rule okay so when I use a random letter that is the rule that goes with it the general one all right so instead of P I get to put in negative 5 so if you like to do it on separate paper you're welcome to so the first one is well the the, the rule is going to be negative 3p plus 4 but I'm now using negative 5 for the first input okay put it in a bracket and we work that out then we're going to use negative 3 from the table and then we're going to use oh I've frozen a bit there we go then we're going to use 0 so negative 3 times 0 plus 4. Then we're going to use positive 9. Negative 3 times 9 plus 4. Then I'm going to use, lastly for this one, the number 20. Okay, so that's all the numbers from the table, the top of the table, using the rule. Again, you can do it in your head if you are able to. Okay, so negative 3 Touching a bracket means multiply. Negative times negative is positive. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 4 gives me 19. That's my first answer. Then negative times negative gives me positive. 3 times 3 gives me 9. And then I'm adding on a 4, which gives me 13. Anything times 0 is 0. Don't worry about the negative. It doesn't even matter. 0 plus 4 is positive 4. Then here I've got actually a positive 9 on the inside. So negative times positive is negative. 3 times 9 is 27. So you owe me 27 Rand, but then you pay me 4 Rand back. So you actually owe me less. So you only owe me negative 20. 3 rand. Okay, so when you add on to a negative, you get less negative. Then again, negative times that's a positive is a negative. 3 times 20 is 60 plus a 4. So negative 60, you're adding on to it, you're getting even less. So you just subtract the two numbers in your head and then keep the the sign of the bigger number. So 60 minus 4 is 56, but we keep the sign of the bigger number. All right, and then that gets you the overall value. So in our table, we have 19, we have 13, 4, negative 23, and negative, oh, sorry, 56. Negative 56. So if I used P, it would be negative 3p plus 4. If I used x, it would be negative 3x plus 4. If I used pen, negative 3 pen plus 4. So you're just substituting in whatever you're given. Here you're given numbers. All right. The last one here is working with um, x again. x is the most common with y. So it's saying, what will y be? My output. So that's representing my output. If I use this rule with my input called x, and these are all my x values. So instead of x, I'm able to put all of these values. All right, so let's do these ones in our head. Negative 7, well, maybe we want to do this one here, times by positive 3 is negative 21 plus 7. So again, if you want, you can subtract um, 7 from 21 and keep the bigger side. So that's going to get us negative 14. 3 times 0 is 0 plus 7 is 7. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 7 is 13. 3 times 6 is 18 plus 7 is 25. 3 times 10 is 30 plus 7 is 37. All right, so then you can work on exercise 5.2. And then also try working on these basic word problems. I'll open it up now. And then the revision exercise. And then that's it for the number patterns and the functions and all the substitution. Then we're going to be going on to 
in the next unit six and then i know it sounds weird going on to unit eight after that it's just they link in your textbook i don't know why they didn't put them together um unit seven is equations we're going to come back to that so we're starting with expressions that's topic six and topic eight which will be in the next videos so if we go to page 55 in your textbook um sorry it's 56 in the textbook so this is page 56 in your textbook there are some basic word problems here i want you to try them out i'll do the first one with you though so you can get the idea it says if the perimeter of a square is given by p equals voice there's your rule and a side is represented by s determine p if s is one two three four meters so they here's the rule s is the input they want you to work out the output so it's the same idea but now they're just giving two words so p equals four s so p they're asking you for what the perimeter is so that's the output what are we getting if our input is one two three four meters so this whole thing is the rule so when what is your perimeter what is your output when your side is one two three four you'll be able to work it out just like here say what will your output be if x is negative seven x is zero x is two so here you would work out p is equal to four into one two three four and then you'd work that out let me just grab a calculator so one four three two times by four so you can just type it in your calculator just like that okay and then equals four nine three six if you want your calculator understands when you put it in exactly like the rule though so with the bracket and then you can say equals it will give you the same answer all right so you can then work on that as well as the revision exercise Again, the memos are up and you'll be able to ask questions um, with pleasure when we get back to school. Um, or you are also welcome to put a note on the Google Classroom and then I can chat with you about that. All right, good luck with it. And I will record the Unit 6 and, seven, uh, unit six and 8 videos in the next few days.